I never knew my father. I was brought up by a strong mother who was involved in witchcraft, anthropology and stuff, and I stayed on the road the whole time. And never lived in one place for longer than about two years. And two older sisters. Oh, my father was a communist. I lost track of in the time when Frelimo took over Mozambique. She didn't sort of outwardly encourage me, but she was a very good mother in that she was very unstable and um, gave me a kind of um, disastrous upbringing that was um, largely responsible for my, what, my, what, what I am today. I mean, the fact that she was, very, she was kind of a, a quasi-feminist, I guess, in some manners, and that she felt that men were kind of irrelevant. And um, I never really um, had much in the way of father figures in my life. So he's, he's made it in your eyes, I guess. I mean, well, he always knew he was going to make it, didn't he? Yes, yes, but it's, it's flabbergasting that it's so fast. Yeah, I can't yeah. I mean, it's what, 25? 24. Oh, nearly 25. Who is 24? Well, November's still wrong, isn't it? But, you know, you expect a, uh, someone doing what he's doing to be, you know, in his 40s or, you know, it's just made of things. No, it's also very, very easy to mislead people on these things, you must understand, Morris, because uh, many things can be faked very, 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 very easily. I'm a great believer in paranoia. This is one thing that's great about South Africa, is that if you want to spend any time in this part of the world, you start understanding paranoia really well. So you start to realize, OK, right, the radio's lying, the TV's lying. Um, so don't, don't listen to these teachers, because you know, they obviously don't make any kind of sense. Most of the projects I initially worked on were, would be either elaborate black, black comedies about third world politics or, um, for, or there might be um, some kind of, say, Easy Rider with Bushman, but some very, very strange movies and um, they couldn't really hang on any kind of peg. But then I discovered that certain things in my work scared them. If I talked about the supernatural or something, or there was a murder or something in the story, this would scare people, and although it might not be relevant to it or they might be misinterpreting it, I, could, I was able to pick up on that. And I'd seen a lot of junk movies. And like when, when, when Harvey rolled around, but my, my feeling was, well, shit, I can, you know, if I can't, they won't let me do any of these, I can, you know, I can make, at least make a better um, B movie than some of the stuff I'm watching on videotape. I had some radioactive waste here for ages in this bungalow. What was it? Trinitite. Mm, it's this um, part of this Trinitite's an artificial man made mineral, basically. It was created when the Trinity um, test exploded, basically the first A-bomb, and fused the desert floor beneath the Trinity test into a sheet of solid glass, but a kind of weird sort of glass called Equinane Trinitite, which was as a result of this explosion. It's all covered over with concrete now, but um, a large hunk of this Trinitite was cut from the valley floor before it was covered up with concrete. And in fact, a piece of this stuff was actually um, here in this A-frame on this coffee table floor, right? Quite a while in the last few weeks, it's just been packed off and it's gone back to London with my personal effects. And it um, was kind of amusing. We had this great glowing hunk of radioactive waste passing around. Somebody gave it to me and I kind of picked it up and looked at it like I trying to figure out what, what it was and, um, and what they're giving it to me. And then they told me it was some um, radioactive waste, which was um, kind of amusing. Uh, the bones in my hand ached afterwards. <laughs> and you're taking it back to London, right? You're afraid of it. No, we all got kind of used to it after a while. <laughs> but it just, it just seemed curiously inevitable. The person who gave it to us, uh, to us said it was very laconic, told us it wasn't radioactive worth a damn anymore. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, it's just that one. But definitely, have it. there's this whole nuclear nonsense thing out here anyway. But it's uranium, it's uranium country. It's flat country, Namibia. It's a flat country, it's got uranium, it's got ut atomic nuttiness, it's got funny little border crossings and closed secret zones all over it. And it's also got um, vanishing hitchhikers in the road and ghosts. It's got lots of UFO sightings. There have been got huge amounts of flying saucer sightings. So I don't know what it is about very flat countries like this. This is the same in southwestern America and places like Utah and Nevada. And a lot of vanishing hitchhiker stories from um, Utah. UFOs, always UFOs and desert country. Okay, well, it's all over for me here. It's, it's plainly going to be degrading and pointless um, hanging around here any longer because I've lost my power and um, I'm basically like a shadow before the sun. I have to flee. But first, there are a few vile personal grudges and things which I have to settle them down. Uh, a few sort of last gestures to be had.
and then tomorrow I shall be flying by a, a, a sort of very weird South African helicopter uh, all the way out of Swakamund and across the desert and I shall fly the desert type of Walkman for this and some cassettes and we'll um, be flown over a huge, a huge amount of volcanic rock and over the top of a big volcano crater we're going over a huge ancient volcano called Mount Bukharis which is huge and planned to do it, fly out the side of the volcano and up right over the crater and look down at it and um, there afterwards they're flying to a huge canyon called the Fish River Canyon which is in fact the home of an ancient spiritual entity from Bushman mythology called Kutain Kuru, the great snake father who's meant to live in the Fish River Canyon. It's a mighty place, the second largest natural canyon after the ground, and generally unexploited, just huge and ancient and silent. And the chopper is meant to um, fly down the Fish River Canyon, and they're going to drop me on the edge of it, and I'll show up and fly away. And this is formerly for me the end of Dust Devil, the final shot. And I know you guys are intending to try and get to the Fish River Canyon in some way, but I fully doubt that you'll be able to find us or see me any further after that. I will be proceeding away into the dust, and um, the whole of dust devil will be quickly lost in um, distance behind me. Time is short now.